You sound bitter, I'm not gonna lie. I sound what? You sound bitter. I think you're so far down the rabbit hole, you were there on a no-fly list, you're talking about how the FBI was investigating <laughs> oh, you. Oh man, you were at January. Sneeko's little bro and him hard. No matter how popular, no matter how much- This is something, I don't know how I've managed to avoid this. I always try to reanalyze and reanalyze and reanalyze um, because I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. It feels like a lot of people have run into this problem. Politics is always a fight for the center. Hillary Clinton identified that she was correct. She didn't win that fight. Um, and it still continues to be true to this day. Was getting the Republican party to be on his side. He, of course- he I, 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 I can't actually believe, I can't believe it. So he goes 100% correct. That, I don't know where, I don't know if he's been reading something or if he's like completely like stumbling into the absolute correct answer, but this is absolutely true. Trump had a huge fuck. I'm uh, I'm going back to being meaner. I'm gonna start to, we need to start incorporating the, the past shards of ourself and I'm gonna start being meaner to people like that. I think I was pretty mean yesterday. Like, I, I, I don't know what your, um, your, I don't, I don't know what I said. I'm trying to sound smug. That's, that's the challenging thing is that I'm trying to illustrate to somebody how stupid they are, but I have to do it in a way that doesn't come across as smug as fuck, right? It's a very, very, very challenging line to walk. When you're linking me charts, and you're saying, this is like my data. That's like a data, that's like a data thing. But that's not, that doesn't make an argument. That's just, that's like a starting point. You can't just link me a chart. What? Like, that's, I can't even believe you would do that. Like if you're gonna come prepared to, now if he didn't have anything and he just was speaking like, oh, I know this, that's fine. But the fact that you took time to prepare and then what you prepared were just a couple charts plotting two variables against each other. Like, bruv. What? What's going on here? Hey, Nick. Hey, what's going on, man? Not much. You, you, you sound bitter. I'm not going to lie. I sound what? You sound bitter. I am bitter. Yeah, I'm pissed off. What did, what did you expect to hear? What, what did you expect him to say? I expected him to go out there and talk about what's really happening, which is censorship, which is... He talked about censorship. I just think he wasn't as high energy as you wanted him to No, be. he didn't. He did not talk. When did he talk? What did he say about censorship? Uh -oh. He was saying the people in here. He ended the speech was talking about how they censored me and it's a crazy time and that I was yelling at my chat saying Rumble's going to go up. He, he, did, he did touch on censorship. Nah, barely. And, uh, and, and listen, man, I mean... The thing is, I've been focusing on this stuff. I've been in it for the last six years. I've I know, been that's why you're bitter, because you've been in the trenches and he wasn't speaking up for you. But this kind of goes back to our last conversation when you told me about Charlottesville, and I told you that there's some battles that you need to compromise or else you're not gonna get the popular vote. What I was just telling my chat was, I understand that you are fully red pill and you are completely against globalism, but you need to pick your battles in order to unify the country. Oh, look, that's cute. Even if Cinco is like, maybe lost <laughs> to the Nazis. He still learned some lessons. That's good, the choose, picking your fights is true. I don't know if Fuentes will admit it to him, but Fuentes knows this as well, right? Like, like I think that the far right realized that there are some fights that they just looked fucking horrible on. And I was saying, you could win and you could run for president in the future, but there's certain things that you just can't talk about or you're gonna alienate too many people. So Trump realized the mistakes that he made in, in that 2015 speech that you love was that he was immediately seen as a racist. He was immediately seen as, so he was xenophobic. He was talking about the Mexicans are coming here, they're rapists. And he was fighting those quotes for, for how long? For pretty much his entire campaign, he was labeled as a racist, and he's finally beat those allegations for the most part, and now he's won over the la Latino vote. Uh -huh. He's already, he has, and my, I'm in here, bro, the Cubans love him. They're here waving the flags, they're going along with their trucks. You do have to pick your battle. So I think he's just going in with a different game plan. In 2015, 2016, he was going in fully controversial. Let me talk about the globalists. Let me talk about the liberals. Let me talk about what's really going on. Let me be an independent. I'm going to be an outsider. I'm going to drain the swamp. And now he wants to win over the Republicans as well. I don't think that he changed up his ideology. He just realizes that he has a different battle that he's fighting now. He can't go as controversial as he did seven years ago because you won't win. You're gonna be completely censored. They are gonna think that you're divisive. And right now, America needs somebody who is seen as inclusive, even if they're not really that. It's all. It's a lot about optics. And I think you're so far down the rabbit hole, you were there on a no-fly list. You're talking about how the FBI was investigating <laughs> oh, you. Oh man, you were at January. Sneeko's little bro and him hard. 
January 6th. Of course, he's not going to talk about January 6th. I was telling my chat that I wanted to talk about the vaccines. Of course, he's not going to be controversial. This was the first announcement speech. Well, careful. Trump supports the, the vaccines. In that speech from 2015 was he was first announced. It was Trump is going from a reality TV star businessman to a politician. A completely different speech. He needs to grab headlines. He has the headlines. He's been the president. Whether you like it or not, you're saying that you wanted to be an outsider. He's already been the president. He's on the inside now. It's a different battle. Well, here's the thing. I mean, first of all, I, I totally disagree with you about the so-called divisiveness. And, and even as far as the optics goes, I that's an expression I used to use. To me, optics is looking right. Optics is having a good presentation and looking competent. Optics does not mean completely compromising and completely conceding. And, and the thing is, he didn't. It, you're well, thinking look, that because you're so far hang, down on, hang on, hang on. You, you hang on. Oh, yeah, you, go, I, go, I'll, go. I'll let you go. So in 2016, holy shit, the prodigal son, after three days of not donating, is returned. Evil fossil with the 999 LA. That's a whole Illuminati country away from me. I'll miss you, baby. See you when I'm done sitting up for you. Oh, man, I hope you're at our Georgia canvassing event, okay? <laughs> I'm coming strapped, though, so <laughs> just as a warning. <laughs> man, welcome, Evil Fossil, back to the fold. He actually won. And in 2016, he won a crushing victory against every Republican in the country. Rubio, Cruz, Kasich, every walk of life, every, no matter how popular, no matter how much. This is something, I don't know how I've managed to avoid this. I always try to reanalyze and reanalyze and reanalyze um, because I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. It feels like a lot of people have run into this problem where they're, they're like, um, what would you call it? Like a flash in the pan? Um, people will chase the highs that they had at one point in time and they never change up. Um, something I'm always scared of is that like, you ever see these old YouTube channels and like the people are still posting but they like just completely fell off. And when I say fell off, I don't mean like, oh, you're not popular anymore, but like they just didn't adapt to the times. They just kind of do the same old or whatever. Um, it's kind of like a scary thing to watch because you'll see these people that used to be like um, super popular and then they, they haven't like adapted their message or anything. Yeah, I was gonna say, I saw that Armored Skeptic post in my subreddit the other day. Um, it's fucking synergy. Apparently he made a post like complaining about like how he has like no like no friends or no family or nothing like everything is like falling apart in his life or something. I think he became but I also think I don't know if he's I don't want to say crazy but he might be like he did a huge bend towards like Christianity um and became I don't people were saying he became a cult leader. I don't know if he became a cult leader or not. But it's just interesting to see this guy his channel Oh, this doesn't even go back far enough. Because these guys were popular in like 2017, I think. Does this, this site only archive back to 2019? But um, to see a channel with like almost 500,000 subs struggling to pull like 100,000 views a month. And then to see the people like complaining about it. It's kind of scary, it's always. I'm completely lost and alone. I don't know what to do and I have nowhere to go. I hate that this is the only place I can even share this. It's all gone. I burned myself out the last two to three years fighting to get to the end of this. I had hoped that there was something waiting for me, but there's no light at the end of this tunnel. Now I'm broken, hungry. I probably won't even be able to afford internet access soon. Every time I pour my heart out about this, all I get is, you okay, bro? No, I'm not okay. I no longer have the strength to dig myself out of this. Are he and Shu still together? Nope. But, um, yeah, I don't know, I, I hear, so like I'm hearing that like, Sneeko is developing an understanding of this or him under, or he understands this, that like Trump needs to adapt and change his message. And Flint is like, no, in 2016, he did this. And it's like, bro, cool. What year is it now though? It's not 2016 anymore, my dog. Much money or the, the dynastic effect. He beat them all. Like he single-handedly consolidated the party and became the most popular Republican literally ever in the history of America, statistically. And then for the first time in 30 years as a Republican, he won Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. So, you know, because what you're saying 
is very conventional wisdom in the Republican Party. This was the idea in 2008. In 2008, it was McCain and Sarah Palin. And Sarah Palin, the Republicans hated because they said she's crazy and she comes across like a total rube. But you know, wait, am I crazy? I thought Palin was, she became, uh, I'm really biased with my parents. Didn't she become like relatively popular in the Republican Party? Um, she was a nobody when McCain picked her. That was a weird fucking pick. But didn't people grow to like her because she like was more extreme than McCain or represented that? I wonder what I wonder what Palin pulled as. I'd have to find it. My family loved McCain, uh, or not McCain. I'm sorry, <laughs> they didn't like McCain. Uh, my family loved Palin, but my family are more on the extreme conservative side. Fuentes is literally doing the thing communists do where they say the party needs to move left to become really extreme to give, oh yeah, everybody does this when they're on the extremes, right? Um, uh, commies do this, we need to go more left, we need to go more left, and then he's doing this, and the MAGA people, we need to go more right, we, we need to go more right. Uh, no, <laughs> the voters that uh, Trump lost, not Trump, kind of Trump, the voters that the Republicans lost were independents. That's the problem, is the people in the middle. It's, a, it's always a fight over the soul of the middle. That's why you don't hear us having conversations about like, what does the squad want? What does the squad want in, in the House of Representatives? Nobody cares what the squad wants. What we do care about are what Manchin and Cinema want, because they're the ones that are near the center. They're the ones that are the at-risk votes, right? Congressionally speaking, these are the ones that are most likely to lose their seats. It's not gonna be people on the extreme right or people on the extreme left that are losing their seats to the other people in the par to the other party. And it's because they represent the voters that are most likely to swap. So politics is always a fight for the center. Hillary Clinton identified that she was correct. She didn't win that fight. Um, and it still continues to be true to this day. Oh, what John McCain didn't turn conservatives out. Conservatives didn't show up for him in 2008, and he got killed. If anything, they the only reason people did turn out was for Palin. The base of the Republican Party liked Palin. They hated McCain, but they lost because McCain was at the top of the ticket. In 12, Romney ran the same way, and Romney ran saying, I'm going to be like a moderate conservative. I'm not going to offend anybody. And, and guess what? They still demonized him because of ridiculous things. They asked him in a debate. They said, you know, what do you say about the fact that we want to have female representation in government? And he said, well, I did that as governor of Massachusetts. I said, bring me women applicants. And they brought me binders full of female applicants, binders full of women. Yeah. And for weeks they were like, he said binders full of women. He thinks women are just p pieces of paper. So they, even though he was like as uncontroversial as a Mormon, he drinks milk. He was as uncontroversial as it gets. And they still demonized him and he got, and he lost too. Trump ran in six. Yeah, but he's coming off of it's Obama. Okay, people f***ing loved Obama. All right, it's first black president, decently he got the ACA passed. Like, of course, Obama is getting like huge turnouts, record turnouts for voters. I don't think it's fair to say that Republicans necessarily failed here. You're just up against like the, the first black president, right? Like, geez. And every time that he said something controversial, like illegals or rapists or ban Muslims or whatever, he just kept going up. And then the point is, it doesn't mean controversial equals effective because that's not true. It means that you have to play a game that is not rigged. And political correctness, the sort of play it safe, play it smart, all of those conventional standards are designed so that people can't win. It's designed so that if you play into them, you don't say anything that challenges the status quo. If you don't color in the lines, then you are- And again, I'm gonna keep going back to that email until some other PhD history guy emails me and <laughs> says that other guy was wrong. And again, this is just the natural cycle of populists. You come out, you shit on the system, you talk about how horrible the establishment is, and you're gonna come as a populist and you're gonna do it better, and every single time populist leaders come into power, nothing changes. They suck shit, they don't know how to work the system, they don't know how to do anything effectively, they're garbage leaders, they surround themselves with bad people. Look at all the ex-Bernie campaign members that are now lunatics and look at all of the ex-Trump cabinet members who are either f***ing in prison or have turned their backs on Trump. Like, it's just not an effective way to govern. Coming in and shitting on the system relentlessly with no ways to fix or reform or to work within the system are, spoiler alert, a horrible fucking way to lead a country or anything. Are deemed a racist, anti-Semite. So trying to play it safe is a losing game. If you play it safe effectively, you're not changing anything. If you don't play it safe or you're not effective, then you get all the, the so-called baggage anyway. And so Trump realized that. He cut through that in 2016. He spoke directly to the people. What other Bernie Sanders are crazy? That was just Brianna Joy Gray and Warren Gunnels. There were like two more listed in that Reddit post. One was like a journalist with like a really bad reputation, or I think was literally blacklisted from Washington. There, there were two other people I think that were listed too, but... 
people through Twitter. And that was how he was able Sirota, to not maybe? just win, Sirota? consolidate the Republican Party like it never happened before, but also flip states that Republicans thought were gone. People said Pennsylvania was fool's gold. Every year they try to win Pennsylvania, every year they had lost. I also think, I think, I, I said this at the time, you can find a lot of clips in the Senate. I think that Trump shouldn't get all of the credit for winning the election. I do believe that Hillary Clinton should get a lot of the credit for losing the election, too, because God damn, she was like one of the most hated people for, for Republicans. Um, like, Jesus Christ. I think I said this in the past that like, like Hillary was like one of the only people that I truly think could have lost to Trump. If if the Democrats could have scrounged up a better candidate, I don't know if Trump would have been as effective. But until Trump came and and ran the entire table and created a new majority. And and this is what people always do. A business will be really 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 successful. And they'll say, how do we make more money? And they'll go, I know, let's let's sell everything and let's start something totally new and totally different. Sort of like Facebook. Facebook changed your name to Meta. They're like, we have a great business selling uh, advertisements to boomers, you know, to retard boomers. Let's change it up and now let's make a metaverse. And it's like a horrible bet. It's oh no, oh God, that, ana that business analysis is so wrong. The problem with Facebook the changing of their direction was a good idea, but Meta just might not have been the good change. The problem was that I think Facebook's user acquisition was either down or slipping into the negatives. They were losing users and they needed a way to reinvigorate the platform or to go in a new direction. You can't usually just trudge forward with the same shit over and over and over again and be successful. Oftentimes it does require you to change up or move in new directions. Um, Facebook is probably correct in identifying that they need to do something new because people were like dumping off of Facebook. Um, you can't just say that like, oh, like they just tried something new and that was bad. They should have just kept with the old shit, you know? It's terrible, but this is, it's, it's a particular kind of fallacy that people make. This is what the GOP did. They won on Trumpism and then they said, well, we did so good. I know, let's completely change your recipe. It's like new Coke. Coke and Pepsi were battling in the 80s and 90s. And Coke was at its pinnacle, kicking Pepsi's ass. And they said, I know, let's change the flavor. Let's completely change our flavor. And we'll call it new Coke. And people fucking hated it. And they quickly- Wait, when did this happen? I don't even know, whatever. The uh, reverse course. And that's sort of what Trump is doing. This is like new Coke. It's like, hey, remember how everyone got excited and we won and it was totally awesome? Well, what if I was like Paul Ryan? What if I was like all those guys that lost? What if we changed all the fundamental attributes to try and gain a margin a little 80s. bit more? Oh, okay. And like, that's the kind of thinking strategically and particularly for this political context, which is completely flawed. But it's a so different that, method. You're talking about Romney and you're talking about McCain, people who weren't already the president. See, the thing is Trump already has that controversial public appearance. Everybody thinks that he's a racist. The normies, I think that you're too far down this rabbit hole in what you believe in, and you're not thinking about how the average person perceives Trump right now or what the average American really wants to hear. So he already did that. He's already won, he's already been the president. Why would he be controversial again? Why would he try to alienate people when probably the biggest struggle that he had was getting the Republican party to be on his side? He, of course- he I, 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 I can't actually believe, I can't believe it. So he goes 100% correct. That, I don't know where, I don't know if he's been reading something or if he's like completely like stumbling into the absolute correct answer, but this is absolutely true. Trump had a huge problem getting the Republican party. He brought a lot of voters out, but he couldn't work with anybody in leadership. He was fucked. He had no good relate. Had Does Trump have a single good relationship with any establishment figure in Congress? Like, does McConnell even like Trump? Uh, like, he, it is such a huge problem that Trump needs to overcome. And Steve goes right. Trump's already controversial. He's already said crazy shit. He's got those people on his side. He doesn't need to appeal to those people. He needs to get the moderates and the people in the center. He needs to get all the people because there are, believe it or not, I know that we hate Republicans here. Yeah, I hate Republicans. But like, there are a lot of Republicans in the center that are looking at that January 6th shit and they're like, that's really f***ing cringe, bro. That is ultra f***ing cringe. And those are the Republicans that Trump has to recapture because there are a lot of people in the center right that get turned off by shit like that. Like even on the day of January 6th, was it Hannity or, or was it Trump Jr.? I don't remember. There were people tweeting at him or, or, or tweeting amongst each other. It was like, bro, Trump needs to rein this shit in. This shit is a fucking disaster. It needs to stop. This is his tiki torch moment, okay? Take off the fucking hoods, learn how to dog whistle and call your 
bandits off, okay? Because you're destroying our fucking party. Like that is absolutely that is absolutely correct. Trump needs to recapture the the like, these like center right Republicans. Probably the biggest struggle that he had was getting the Republican Party to be on his side. He, of course, he steamrolled everybody else. He steamrolled Rubio, everybody else running. Uh, who else? All, all the other cookie cutter Republicans. But the hardest part was getting support from the Republican Party, which ultimately you need to be an effective president. Yep. You can't pass any laws and you're not going to be able to win the fights that you need to win if you don't have other politicians on your side. Correct. I think you were just expecting that high energy Trump. He was saying a lot of the same stuff that you agree with. He was talking about anti-immigration. He was talking about the economy. I guess you were saying that he was talking too much about the economy. But he also said that he wanted to kill drug dealers. Has Trump ever said that? Has he ever said that he was going to announce the death penalty for a drug dealer? It was pretty extreme in a lot of cases. Of course, he didn't go fully down the, the Trump angry rabbit hole. But you got to realize he is playing against that character that they painted of him. And he saw what the media did in the past five years. And it needs to be simplified. The, you were just expecting a really high energy, problematic, yelling about talking about how problematic uh-oh that's a bot word what word <laughs> it is a bot word i can't believe sneeko yay that's part of his vocabulary that's actually so funny <laughs> now nick is the one getting triggered <laughs> problematic yeah that was a bot word but that's what they think that's what see you're not thinking like a bot that's how you need to think someone like a bot in true. Order to get votes true you're eating the steak bro you're eating the steak right now you know what that is what is that? You know, in the Matrix, in the Matrix, the, the guy that betrays Neo, who takes the red pill. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. You know, and Cypher. he goes, it's yeah. a holographic steak, but it still tastes f***ing good. We can't, we yeah. have to think into the future. We gotta be yay-like. We gotta be like yay. We gotta be like Michael. Yeah, we but look at, like where's Trump. yay We gotta be now? like Alex Jones. Okay. We can't be bots. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And that was a bot word. And I am ashamed of myself for using that. But honest question, Nick. What would happen? See, you, now you're saying you don't even want to vote for Trump. That your chat saying that you should take off the hat. You, you don't even want to vote anymore. What would happen if you ran right now? Well, I can't run. I'm not 35. Answer the question. In a hypothetical world, if say, say you are 35 and say you run based on what you talk about, it, you talk about race realism, you talk about anti-immigration, you talk about Christian, you, you go fully down, you talk about globalism, you talk about Israel, you talk about China, and you offend everybody, you don't give a f What's going to happen? Oh. I'm talking about me running. I'm talking about Trump running. I'm talking about a proven, because I'm not running for president. If I were running for president, I would not do things exactly like I'm doing them now. But Trump is, and Trump did before. And him becoming before. president didn't change anything about that fundamental equation. And, and here's, I think, your maybe your issue is, Trump won, and, and that was a decisive victory in the consciousness because they said he can't win. He's got a 3% chance. It, it's not good. You remember Quintus that compilation when the they past. said, <laughs> you know, Joy Reid, he can never win. He's a Huffington Post. He's got 3% chance. So it was a decisive victory. It said, look, they don't control our minds. They don't control the narrative. Huffpo, what he said one percent chance. As opposed to what you're saying is retreat to the middle and sort of moderate to get more is he should have pushed further. He should have pushed further and said, you know, look, I ran in 2016, I served four years, and look at what they did to me. They just rigged it, which they did. I mean, they rigged the, vo the vote, they rigged the media, they rigged everything. And he should have said, instead of saying, we gotta make it like it was two years ago, he should have said, look, we still have so much more farther to go. I ran and I won, and that's a great- if I, I might be wrong. I'm reaching into like our-, our our cultural, our, like our social cultural archetypes here. When it comes to like watching movies or hearing stories, um, I feel like it's, I feel like this sounds like a loser line. Like they rigged it, they rigged it, they rigged it. Um, like if you truly believe that you've got like this mandate from God or from the public or whatever, Right? <clears throat> um, has anybody seen this movie? Like, um, I think I actually haven't seen this movie. I don't even know why I'm familiar with these. I don't know why I'm familiar with these clips. I don't know. I have no idea what the f this movie is about. But um, Kurt Russell's character 
before he comes out here to fight this uh is it the king i don't know who the fuck this guy is but before he does it he gets stabbed so that this guy's like a higher chance of beating him right um but it feels like in the Republican world, for some of these Trump worshipers, like imagine if Kurt Russell's character came out and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, not Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell is the Metal Gear Solid uh, <laughs> inspiration. Russell Crowe. Before Russell Crowe comes out, um, he gets stabbed. Imagine if he comes out in the middle of the arena and he's like, um, I got stabbed. I got stabbed. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. And then he just cries about that for like the remaining 10 minutes of the movie. And then maybe they even find out about it. Like, oh, wow, it was rigged. Like, he auto wins, right? I, that's usually not like the heroic archetype we're looking for. Usually we're looking for somebody that can overcome shitty situations or overcome even rigged situations and, and, and come out of them still successful. Like, I feel like a more inspiring message for Trump was like, hey, be vigilant, watch the polls. We're going to do all we can to make sure everybody's held accountable and we're going to win no matter what. Um, I feel like that's a better message than this like crying and crying and crying over and over and over again. Um, I, just from like, a, from like backing up from like a cultural like archetype point of view. I don't know this. I, I just I'm never going to stop harboring on this. I just feel like it's so fucking cringe to hear Trump like crying so much about the election shit. Like, bro, if you're the hero of the Republican Party, like be vigilant and overcome like don't don't cry so much about 2020 like it's you look so bad you just you look like a fucking loser even if it is rigged you look like a loser um rise and overcome great thing that the democracy triumphed but then powerful forces arrayed against me consolidated to repel our incursion to repel our attack now we need to go back in with 50,000 personnel into the White House and we need to change the deep state forever. We need to fire everybody in the White House, bring back everybody from the embassies and the diplomatic mission. We need a completely clean house. You got to build on your momentum. He as said opposed a lot of to that this stuff. He was just more simplified. He was talking about the deep state. He was talking about the globalists. He was talking about the corrupt politicians. He just didn't say it as fiery as he did before. He got older. Well, I, I agree with you. He got older. <laughs> okay, that's got to be ripped for me. He got older. Well, let's chill. He got from he went from like seventy four to seventy eight or whatever, right? Like I don't know. Like at seventy plus years old, you're probably pretty developed. But and and I and I'm I was not expecting a lot, but I was. Wait, Destiny, you're a somewhat sane individual. You're analyzing this from a rational viewpoint. People who cry foul about election and cheating really believe that it happened. In their mind, it's you who is insane and doesn't get it. No, 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 no. I'm analyzing it from their point of view. Republicans might not realize it, but I'm willing to bet that deep down, if you would, have, if you were able to do some like sentiment analysis or like emotional underpinnings of like people like in their feelings, I think that. Trump, people were hyped for Trump in 2016 because he felt like the system was broken. A lot of people were unhappy and he wanted to fucking plow a, fat, a path forward. He wanted to do a 90 degree shoot off from where politics was heading and plow his own path. Make America great again. Make America, we're gonna do new shit. We're gonna close, we're gonna lock Hillary up. We're gonna fucking lock down the board. It was all these new ideas. It was very forward thinking. All of Trump's shit, from his campaigning in 2016 was all forward thinking. And I think that that was an energetic move for a lot of new Republicans, for a lot of young people that were following Trump. It's like, holy shit, this is some new shit. He wants to like plow this totally fresh path. He wants to break through these walls. He wants to do shit. That's cool. And that's energizing. And it's invigorating. You feel cool. Make America great again. Hell yeah, let's do it. But now every time it's like, and then they rigged the vote. And they did us dirty at the ballot box and they rigged it. And it's like, yeah, you kind of got like conspiracy shit. It's like, okay, yeah, cool. I guess they did. But I don't think that that gives you the same energy. It doesn't feel as like perspective. It doesn't feel as forward looking. You might still kind of like him and you'll vote for him even maybe. But I don't think the same energy is there. Um, I, yeah, I just, it doesn't feel like it. But I could be wrong. I was expecting more than this. Why were you and, so and, disappointed? You are way more. I was fired up. I was really happy. I, 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 my chat was excited too. I think he touched on a lot of great points. And think about it this, like if, if he doesn't win, do you think Biden even stands a chance? Uh, I don't know, but at that point I wouldn't care. I mean, because if we get DeSantis, it's, it's gonna be the same. I mean, Biden's not really running anything in the same way that DeSantis really wouldn't be running anything or Newsom or whoever would win. You think DeSantis really is actually anything. gonna run or he, you don't think he's happy as the governor? I think it's more likely he'll run now. Yeah. Sure. After Tuesday because he won Florida by 20 points, yeah. which is crazy. Um, 
But that's because they fixed the election. To his credit, DeSantis fixed no. the elections in 2021. No, it's because DeSantis has been a loud and effective leader in Florida. I think I, I have never, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, obviously I disagree with all of his policies, but has DeSantis done anything where his leadership in Florida has been questioned? He seems like he's an incredible, like if you're a, a Republican and you like the shit that he says, like DeSantis is like, yeah, this guy's like, spearheading like the culture war in an effective way he's also getting like legislation and shit passed through um florida he's oh shit hold on um yeah i feel like desantis is like you're if you're like a florida republican like what is there like i, I mean i just i think his favorability is just very 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 high I and mean, it seems like he's done a good job for the republican party so And as which is crazy because it's like, okay, Arizona's a purple state, and Blake Masters lost by six percent, and Carrie Lake lost by a few percent. Florida, which has always been a purple state, went 20 points, not just for DeSantis, but also Rubio yeah. for both statewide offices, right. and Miami flipped. So, on what planet does Florida go red by 20 points, and Miami Dade is red, yeah. but Arizona is blue, and Georgia and Pennsylvania? That's insane. The The difference is that in Florida in 21, they passed a bill that said, look, we're not automatically sending out. Oh, this is cope. Oh, my God. This is such cope. Fuentes' political chops are destroyed. If he thinks the only reason DeSantis won is because they got rid of fraudulent votes. What an unimaginably naive view. This guy is literally one of the most popular governors in like fucking US history. And you're gonna claim that it's because he changed vote ringing? What a stupid, what a stupid and fucking naive analysis of, of DeSantis. absentee ballots to everybody. We're not gonna open up drop boxes in the middle of nowhere and let people drop off ballots all throughout the night for Cringe. a month. And we're not gonna let people walk around with 200 absentee ballots on behalf of other voters in the back of their car. You know, so so they, they basically reversed everything that happened in 2020 with regards to how COVID and, and how representatives changed the election laws because of COVID. And as a result, Republican landslide. And it wasn't just DeSantis because Rubio got the same numbers. Everyone says, oh, it's DeSantis. Well, Rubio's shit. And he won by 70. Yeah, but how much of that is like down ballot voting and shit, right? How much is it like we know that down ballot voting is a big thing, probably especially um, if your governor is incredibly popular, right? Like. In points, you know, so go figure. So he's, he's copying um, the same method that got them all those points. And DeSantis is a moderate Republican. DeSantis is all about signing laws. He's not a controversial person. He's not in the media picking fights. He's not yelling out insults. True. He's not saying things that people are going to construe as racist. He's just somebody that people can look up to. He's not problematic. He's not. That's what the word is. <laughs> he's not problematic. He, he's a likable guy. And Trump is trying to adopt the same method, especially after being labeled as a, as a crazy conservative. I, th I genuinely think, and I want to hear what you think about this. I genuinely think he's saying the same things that, that you want to hear, but he just did not say it with as much energy. Well, well and here's what I'll say about that. I, I know what you're saying, and you're not entirely, I don't entirely disagree with that because there were a lot of things in there that he said, um, but it's very important, not just what you say, but what you don't say. Because as far as policy, it's it's not very, because when you think about it, Trump was not really on board with us in 16, you know, like Trump. Why is DeSantis so popular? All I've seen of him is culture war nonsense. Why didn't that resonate elsewhere? Um, I think some culture war stuff is people like, but like he also was effective in actually doing something about culture war stuff too, right? Like he got that don't say gay bill passed. He changed recommendations about uh, medications for trans people from the state. Was it the Medicare or Medicaid board or whatever? Um, uh, but also I think weren't a lot of Republicans in Florida really happy about the state of lockdowns as well? Like, didn't he do, a, a, I'm saying a good job from the Republican perspective of like keeping Florida like relatively open while the rest of the country, um, Floridians saw the rest of the country basically like sheltered inside their homes, not being able to leave. And then in um, in Florida, you've got like all these people partying at the fucking beach, um, even 
fucking Chris Christie was like out at the beach having fun and partying with people while he was saying that people shouldn't be doing it. So no, I think that DeSantis from a Republican perspective has just done, uh, he's just like, he's just been a really effective Republican leader. He's done a really good job at, at, at getting his, um, what the state assembly to do shit, his policies around COVID, his culture war stuff. Um, yeah, like, like he's just, yeah, he's just, yeah. The COVID shit skyrocketed him. Yeah, that's not surprising. Never said he was against legal immigration, ever. He said, we're gonna build a wall and put a big, beautiful door in the wall and people can come in legally. You know, so Trump, Trump wasn't even against legal immigration in 16. And, and Trump literally coming into the 2016 election said that he wanted to ban immigration from all Muslim majority countries. These were statements that were literally on Trump's fucking website, okay? <laughs> but, okay. Trump was very heavy on the economy and trade in 16 as well. So the substance wasn't totally different. My problem is not so much what was said, but what was left out. And What was left out, January 6th in the election fraud? Well, election fraud, the 6th, and, and even in terms of time, he talked about the DOJ and the FBI, but it paled in comparison to how much he talked about Ukraine or how much he talked about Biden being a retard or how much he talked about how we're gonna deregulate and make ourselves energy independent. And, and these kinds of things matter because it's, a president can only do so much and the focus matters tremendously. The, the bureaucracy is like an aircraft carrier. You can only change it by very slight degrees. And most things in the executive branch are determined at the very lowest levels by bureaucrats. The things that the president accomplishes are his big initiatives that he wakes up every day and pushes his cabinet members and his guys every day. And so if that's not a big part of the speech, if that's not a big part of the platform, it simply will not be done in the administration. So there was no big picture. There was no big vision. There was no big push for the kind of anti-corruption measures you would need to see to change the country. If he just gets in there and cuts the taxes, deregulates, it's gonna be deja vu all over again. He'll be in there for four years. Economy will be good, that's great. Energy independent, great. Rebuild the military, great. But then, but then it's gonna be impossible for Republicans to win ever again. Democrats get back in in 28, the cycle continues. So it's gotta be a truly revolutionary change that occurs in this election or else I, I don't think it's but who, gonna happen. But who's gonna be that revolutionary? Is it even possible that, see that's why you have a defeatist attitude and you should just accept what you got in front of you. Trump will win. I think this, this method is gonna make him win. Calling Biden the sleepy idiot, saying that he's low energy and talking about immigration and talking about the economy, how making money for a lot of people, not coming off as racist, not coming off as a crazy, loud Hitler comparison guy. Yep. If he comes in more moderate and he, he sticks to what is working, which is money, closing the borders, talking about fentanyl, then he will win. But that, that guy that you really expect to go and shake the room was Trump in 2016 and you saw what happened. They impeached him. They, you saw what happened to you as a result. Maybe you just have to accept the fact that it's not ex that possible to really shake it up. Because if anybody was gonna do it, it would've been Trump at 16. True. So you need to lower your expectations and be happy that he's gonna, he's probably gonna win. I, I'm not even sure if DeSantis will run and Biden will not win. Biden's not gonna get reelected if he, with uh, debating Trump, it's, not, it's just not gonna happen. So compromise a little bit. Maybe all the expectations you have, it, they're just, they're not realistic right now. What you're saying is, I know, I know my chat is gonna disagree with you a lot and I also disagree with you, but what you're saying is, is actually very insightful. This is something that Curtis Yarvin talks a lot about, who I, I don't particularly like him specifically, but he calls this the clear pill. And what you're saying is a lot more insightful than, than maybe how it comes across. Because there's a difference between saying like, oh, Trump is problematic and saying, well, we have to resign ourselves to the fact that that power is very powerful. The, the entrenched interests in America are very powerful and there just isn't, maybe, maybe radical change isn't on the menu right now and it may not be for a long time. And I actually don't think that's, I don't think that's actually a terrible opinion. I think you may be right about that. Um, and here's, here's what I'll say, here's where I would kind of meet you in the middle. I'll say that I'm gonna watch the race because I think you're right, if there's, Trump is still the change agent. He is still the guy who can deliver the most change to Washington out of anybody. If I was gonna vote for anybody, it'd be Trump. And if Trump went against a Democrat, I'd vote for him. And you know what? I think more likely than not, I'll probably be supporting him in a- Do you hate Nick Fuentes? Do you wanna make a difference in your country? 
Do you want to hang out and see me in real life? We're going to be doing Georgia canvassing. Go sign up for the form if you want to come down and do it. I think I'm paying for your hotel room if you come. There you go. Fantabulous. A year, you know, and in a year, the primary won't even have started. The primary started February 24. So in a year from now, it's November 23. Probably within a year's time, I, I imagine it's likely I'll be supporting him for, for the reason you just laid out. All I, what I would like, though, is for him to push the envelope, because I think that there's a real historic opportunity. I think the ingredients are there. I think a window is open where more can be done than normally. And I think that tr if anyone could do it, it's Trump. And I feel like I'm asking for more. I'm asking for a little bit more. I think he can deliver it. And, and that's really what it is, because you're right. If Trump gets in, there's still going to be opportunities for change. It just won't be as radical as I think is necessary or no, how much is won't. possible it or won't. how much we want. You got it. That's what I'm saying. You got to be that guy. And I'm willing to be your PR agent up until then, however long <laughs> it takes, because you just don't reach the normies, man. I'm telling you this as somebody who understands what you're saying. And I agree with a lot of what you talk about, but you alienate so many people by going hard. You need to have some clear pill with the red pill. You got to wrap more layers of ham around the pill before you feed it to the public. And right now that pill looks disgusting. There's, it's covered in all this gook and mud and it's old and it's expired and nobody, it looks disgusting. Nobody wants to eat it. You got to put it in a piece of cake and you could be that person, Nick. I'm, I'm, I really believe in that. I believe in what you're talking about. I believe you love the country. I believe Trump loves the country too. But there's a lot of compromise that needs to be made and you cannot be extremely radical. And, and somebody in my chat said that there were a lot of fence sitters in 2016 and they, they just they didn't vote for him because they didn't agree with this rhetoric. And so he needs a reason to get those fence sitters and the people who thought he was a racist or thought he was too stupid or they, they took a lot of quotes and a lot of people who these regular people who like live in the suburbs and have a normal life. They would never vote for Trump because he's way too wild and crazy. He needs to tap into that audience. You got to lap more layers of hammer on your pill. Well, let me let me play devil's advocate. Let me know what you think about this, because. This is sort of what guides my philosophy. We, we live in a democracy, we operate in a democracy, and we also operate in a capitalist system. And what that means is that we think in terms of mass consumption. We think about an election, we think about retail politics. We, we think about power, we think about elections. We think about elections, we think about average. We think about an ignorant voter, a low information voter. We think about what is going to appeal to a general massive audience, meaning millions, hundreds of millions of people, and, and the lowest common denominator. We also, we also think in those terms because of capitalism. We think about what's marketable and how people are voting in a sense with their money, how they make their purchases and how they're influenced by media or advertising. Things have to be inoffensive to appeal to the most people, to sell the most, get exactly. the most votes. Um, but I, because I'm a reactionary, my view on it is a little bit different. And what I think is that in, you're right that elections are won by majorities and yeah. companies are made by, by volume and volume of sales. But I think that revolutions and revolutionary change and excellence and visions come to excellent people, come to the top 20% of people. And so my message is not for the 70%. And the bottom 10%, it's for the top 20%. It's for people like you who get it. It's for people, because I, I actually think you're a bright guy. No, we don't agree on everything. I hate that you talk to Destiny and his. you don't agree with him and his followers go, Stiko's an idiot. We, you know, you don't agree with them for 10 seconds and they say, you're, you're a fucking dumb it, shit. It is what it is. And it's like, and you disagree with me. I actually think you're a very insightful person. Um, and the things you're saying, our conversations have been raging in politics for 20 years. My mentality on it is, I'm trying to reach a small cult-like following of very exceptional people who are vigorous and energetic and maybe not 100 million people, but maybe 10,000 people who are gonna go out into the world in different areas, whether it's people like you or people in finance, people in government or wherever, and they are going to deliver the revolution because they're making decisions. Your average person may have a vote and there may be 100 of them with votes, but that's all they have is their vote. And then they go and they do what someone else tells them for work and they do what someone else tells them somewhere else. Who tells them what to do? Bosses, people on TV, people in media, people in government. So I'm trying to reach the bosses. I'm not trying to reach the followers. I'm trying to reach the leaders. 
and maybe I won't be the leader. There maybe I will be. There you go. So the, don't don't does you saying that? Do you see why you are being too reactionary by getting that disappointed and saying that you're not going to vote for Trump Jesus. and really denouncing the whole thing in general? If you admit that your ideologies are only for a specific demographic of people, then you need to realize what Trump is doing with that announcement speech. It's a different method. It's not a cozy TV stream. It's talking to the American people with something like 400,000 live people on Rumble. Trump was doing something similar in 16 because the Trump victory in 16 wasn't delivered by the people. It was delivered by, well, it was delivered by him and it was delivered by people on Twitter who were interpreting his message and carrying his message because there were people in 16 like you now who are saying Trump is too, Trump just lost. He said that, you can't say that. And then you had this class of people like Scott Adams or Cernovich or Posobiec or Bannon or Jones who came out and said, no, 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 listen. Listen to what he's saying, actually makes a lot of sense. Actually, this, this, this. Actually, if you look at it this way, he's right. The facts show that he's right and so on. And so I think that it has this cascading effect. I think that's actually the only way because if you don't have an inspiring message, look at who, it's like flies to shit the people that are attracted to the current Trump are just grifters. The people that are surrounding Trump and that, that have buried Trump are grifters that just want to make money and want influence, want to work in the West Wing instead of diehard loyalists who are going to kill, rape, and die, and steal. Not literally, of course, I'm against this thing. <laughs> but, you know, they're going to do whatever it takes Wrong. to deliver a victory for him and for his ideas. And so that that's why I think that you... Rape and, is crazy. And, do you think it's better generally to build things on earth and then ship them up here or should i be just should i just be building them up here so like for instance for science for now i'm wearing these second tier science packs for this arrow frame pull should i be building these on earth and shipping them up here or should i be shipping the beryllium up here and then building them up here they build in one second i think i should just build them up here because i'm already shipping the beryllium plate up here anyway Nick, rape is a crazy level yeah. of dedication to Trump. <laughs> well, and, and here's a, and the last point is this. You're right. You have to be strategic. No, no disagreements. You have to be strategic. You have to be tactical. You have to be tactful. What I, the compromise I'll never make is I'll never lie. Because if you look at the Bible, the Bible never says to lie. It says to be clever. It says to be cunning. You know, when Jesus talks to his disciples he says get get a cloak and a sword and be as clever as what is the clever as serpents you can and use as productivity as modules on the ground like oh never mind we do it um, on the ground then and so he says to be clever and he says to be innocent in other words don't sin be smart but he doesn't say that you need to lie to be a part of god's plan or kill or be dishonest god's plan so that that's the one thing that i'll that, that, that's where I draw the line. Because you're right, strategic is one thing, but what I won't do is lie and lie by omission. But, but you know, there's a way that you can do it. That's why you need a PR agent. Wait, why didn't we finish this video? It's got like one and a half minutes left. Agent, because look at it, you, you alienate a lot of people because you, you don't know how to lie at all and you don't know how to speak bot language. You can't lie, you can't lie. It's not lying, it's just speaking a different language. You have no bot in you and you need to learn some bot. I'll That's teach true. you. I'll teach you some bot. Well, I'll see you soon, right? Are you going to be in LA later this month? LA? What's going on in LA? For uh, for No Jumper. Oh, oh wait, you uh, have to go in person for that? Yeah, yeah, with, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, you know what I texted you about. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, yeah, I guess I can coordinate that. Damn. Because I think, because you're right, I'm a little bit autistic, okay? Yeah. Here's the thing, you're black. You're black, I don't know if you know, you're black. I, 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 you're, you're hip, you're hip, you know, you're, you're hanging. I can, dance, I can 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 do like gang signs and shit like that. I, get, I know bot, I know how to communicate with them, I, I can get, I'm five, five, over five billion views on TikTok. You can speak faster, you know more about these issues, and you're more red and you will never get those types of views on TikTok because you don't speak bot. I know bots, I, I get them. Bro, let me be your PR agent, let me be your PR agent. That's why I was saying we are no jumper, you're there, talking about race realism with three black people on there translating for you. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a good dynamic, bro. But yeah, I'll see you, I'll talk to you. When you move to, when you move to Florida, I think we should do like maybe a once a week podcast or like a once a week.